Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of, well, very interesting bodybuilding updates and honestly, I don't even know how to start this video, what to say about this As you can see right here, Nixilla is out of another show, now he is out of UK Europa Pro He pulled out of Arnold Classic, he pulled out of Arnold Classic UK He pulled out of New York Pro, he pulled out of... Italy and now he pulled out of UK and he almost pulled out of Dubai The plan right now is EVLS Prague Pro and EVLS is by the way his sponsor But is that gonna happen? Who knows? Nobody knows, not even him Nobody knows, but that is the plan Let me show you what Rubio Mosquera and his coach Francisco Aspin had to say about this Queríamos hacer Italia, Inglaterra Sabiendo eh, que aún no estaba a su 100% y que aún le, le faltaría un poquito más de tiempo, decidimos centrar nuestras energías en el campeonato de Inglaterra. Ya teníamos en cuenta que igual Inglaterra sabíamos que no iba a su 100%, quería un 70-80%, pero ¿por qué no intentarlo? No? Pero nos llega, unas, una, eh, nos llega que aún no tenemos el tema del visado resuelto, que estamos ahí trabajando con él. No quiero presurarme, como ya, Exacto. Le, ya se le he dicho a usted, para hacer una preparación, hacer las cosas corriendo. Exacto. Creo que eh, en este caso, la idea de, de tomar la decisión es como para enfocarnos más y seguir y buscar la condición. Exacto. Yo no quiero buscar la competición, porque yo sé que eso con el año va a llegar. Me sigue a mí desde hace mucho tiempo y que yo siempre que yo clasifico a, a Mr. Olimpia, quieren que de pronto... Eh, yo esté ahí en el Olympic y que sea parte de eso. Yo sí, yo claro. lo quiero. Hacer lo que vamos a hacer para el futuro, que para el 2020. Eh. La nueva fecha ha sido seleccionada por Rubiel porque le hace mucha ilusión volver a cerrar un círculo que es. There you go, guys. So basically, the reason why he is not going to do the Italy, actually the UK now and Italy as well, is because he wants to focus on improving his condition and not just pick the show and look whatever. He wants to be 100% and present that on whichever show and it happens to be Prague Pro, which is where he turned pro, which is the show that is ran by his uh, sponsor, EBLS. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say that this doesn't make sense. You know, if he's gonna be 70 or 80% at UK, I mean, he would probably still win at 70, 80%. Who is there to beat him? Patrick Moore? I don't think so. But if that's not what he wants and like there are issues with him getting the visa for the Europe or the UK, actually, there is a special visa for UK, I believe, and then for the, for the US, for the Olympia as well, there are certain problems, yeah, I get it, it does make sense, actually, to like bring his 100% to the Prague Pro, win that show, and focus on the 2025 Mr. Olympia, it does make sense, but what doesn't make sense, what everybody's thinking, is him announcing that he's doing so many shows, and then pulling out at the last moment, what the hell is that? Why he keeps doing that? Like, he's not a man of his word. He's losing integrity by doing this. I mean, if you're not sure you're gonna do a show, don't even say anything about it. Don't announce it. I mean, the guy has a huge following. He's literally one of the most famous bodybuilders in the world right now. Everybody knows who Nexilla is. Everybody's following him closely. As he says, we all want to see him at a Mr. Olympia against the very best in the world in his best condition. Yeah, but if you can't do it, just don't say you're gonna do it. Come on. I went easy on him so far, like I wasn't mad when he pulled out of uh, Arnold Classic or New York Pro or Italy or when he almost pulled out of Dubai Pro, I mean I understood, it always made sense and now also it made sense for Italy against Hunter when Rubio is not on, it wouldn't make sense, I understood that and yeah I guess I can see the sense for pulling out of uh, UK as well but Come on, come on, is there gonna be a reason why he's pulling out of Prague as well? For how long is this gonna continue happening? I don't get it. And another thing is, why is he not 100% for the UK? He had 6 weeks, guys, 6 weeks to improve his conditioning from Dubai Pro. And I would say his Dubai Pro conditioning was like 80%, probably. And now he's at 70, 80. Like, right now his conditioning probably looks worse than for the Dubai Pro. Why did that happen? Why did he go backwards? He had six weeks to push for conditioning. In those six weeks, he definitely could have been 100% shredded. I'm sure about that. Why didn't he do it? 
Is his coach advising him wrongly, or is uh, Rubio not following coach's advices, or like the plan? I mean, is he sticking to the plan at all? Is he just tired from dieting and he doesn't want to do it anymore, or what is going on? Why is he not ready? Why is he 70% six weeks after he was 80%, right? I mean, where is the logic in that? Do you guys have any explanation? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below, but yeah, once again, uh, Nexila is out of Europa Pro UK, once again, he pulled out. Alright, next up, we got a new physique update from Kion Pearson, and as the weeks go by, this guy starts to look more and more impressive as he's getting leaner, and we can see basically the improvements he made in this past offseason, he just looks freakier. Now, this year... The, the, the X frame, the V taper is even more exaggerated at this point because his legs, it seems like they, his legs grew, like they, they, they came up and I think his lats are even bigger and this is at 5 weeks out, so he has 5 more weeks to get harder and leaner and even more impressive now we got 2 questions, the first one is, can he defend his 212 Mr. Olympia title against Sean Clarida? and I'm pretty sure he can, you know, if he won last year and Sean, Sean is not changing anymore, I mean, yeah, like, the plan this year for Sean was to, like, stay smaller and leaner and uh, make sure his midsection doesn't get bloated, like, for the stage, because last year it was a little bit uh, blown out, and uh, if, if Sean comes basically the same as he was before, a little bit lighter than last year with a, flat, with a flatter midsection, I mean, he's gonna be better, sure, but Keon is still growing, I'm pretty sure last year he wasn't, he didn't reach his weight cap in 212. So he's still progressing, he's still growing, he is a lot younger than Sean Clarida. Kion Pearson is like 27, 28 now. He's about three years younger than Derek Lansford, and you guys know what kind of progress Derek Lansford made. And that is the next question that I have. What would happen if he did the Open this year? Where would he place? Is there potential for him to be the next Mr. Olympia in Open, the way Derek Lansford did it? I mean, that's pretty much impossible to predict. Who knew that Derek would win the Mr. Olympia back when he was competing in 212? Nobody knew that. And as far as Keon, I mean, I feel like Keon is probably even more genetically blessed. But the thing is, Derek was suffering to make the weight in 212. Like, he was already heavier than he needed to be for 212, Back when he was competing, he was too heavy, and then when he switched to the open, he didn't really grow that much more muscle, he just didn't burn a lot of muscle away. And Keon is below that weight cap, he doesn't have any trouble making the weight. So in order for Keon to be really competitive in the open, he needs to put a lot more muscle on. But realistically, where would he put that much muscle on? He is already really freaking big. But I mean, sure, I guess he could add more thickness, I feel like Derek is definitely thicker than, than Kian. But even like this, the way he is right now, where do you guys think he would place at a Mr. Olympia? Top 10? I'm pretty sure, yeah, top 10 is very realistic. Top 8? Top 7? 6? What do you guys think? I really can't say, I wanna see him next to those guys, he never competed in the Open. But I mean, I think like top 8? is quite possible, what do you guys think, comment down below, and here is another example of a very successful 212 bodybuilder, who turned out to be a very successful open bodybuilder as well, John Jewett, and this is him basically right now from a couple of days ago, and uh, his conditioning, as you can see, even on this day daylighting, like, it's very transparent, you can see exactly what is going on with his physique, his conditioning is basically spot on, like, I don't think other guys in the, in the Mr. Olympia Open are bringing a much better condition than this. I don't think Derek is much more conditioned, or Hardy last year, or Samson. So, I don't think, or Brandon Curry, or even Andrew Jack. I don't think John Jewett needs to be much leaner than this. And I think he's a lot heavier here than he was at, uh, I believe, on Cooper Pro when he won, when he, when he qualified for the Mr. Olympia. So, I don't know what his plan is, does he plan on coming like super, super diced and try to impress everybody with the freak factor, the freak factor being conditioning, or is he gonna try and come in super full and massive with good conditioning, just good conditioning? I think I would probably go with that, because, you know, he's a 212 guy, former 212 guy, so if he's not as big as the other guys, that can be an issue. 
And if he overdiets and comes in super shredded, I think it can be a trouble. So I, I feel like with this kind of condition right, right here, he has a lot of freak factor going on. I think he should probably just cruise to the show and look something like this. And I think he would probably do still very well. Now, as far as cracking the top 10 for John Jewett, it's a bit of a tall order this year because there is a whole bunch of great guys. He would have to beat guys like Rafael Brenda or Bechru Stabani or like William Bonek and I don't know whoever, who else. There is a whole bunch of great guys fighting for that 10th. So, you know, top 10 this year would be a, a massive challenge, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be in really good condition, improved. He's going to make progress year after year. If not this year, I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be top 10 at some point. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.